Good day, Selim. In the news, a lot of attention is still being paid to the war in Ukraine. But meanwhile, we see that the Chinese economy is still being dominated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Céline Boulanger, macroeconomist at the Grof Peterkam, we've seen the past few months major Chinese cities such as Shanghai on a strict lockdown due to a huge Omicron wave. The total economy in China is suffering. Now, what is the official message of the regime regarding the situation? So officially, they are still sticking with zero COVID policy. That is their priority right now. It is health before growth. Um, and this may seem extreme, especially for countries like ours, where we are just uh, learning to live with the virus. But we have to understand that the Chinese population was not ready at all for Omicron. Um, it is a variant that spreads faster than previous variants. And um, immunity among the Chinese population is very low. This How is come? Yeah. This is because, um, firstly, their population, very few people have had COVID-19 in the past because they've used zero COVID uh, and they were quite successful. Um, also, vaccination rates are very low, especially among the elderly. We see that over 40% of the elderly population is not fully vaccinated. Uh, so immunity is very low. On top of that, the vaccines that they use uh, are less effective. Um, so they really have no choice but to stick with uh, their zero COVID policy. There's a new study that was conducted that shows that if they give up zero COVID, um, they would be hit with a tsunami of new cases overwhelming the health sector. Um, and that could lead to 1.6 million deaths. So really Xi Jinping needs to stick with zero COVID policy at the moment, especially as uh, the 20th National Congress is coming up in the fall and his reputation is on the line. Yeah, and then of course the question is, what can we expect in the coming months? What are the prospects? Luckily, cases are going down. Uh, this wave seems to be brought under control. So that is good news. We see cities like Shanghai that are slowly reopening. But we know that China is not going to be able to keep the virus out of the country forever. Uh, so when new waves will come, they will not hesitate but to use zero COVID policy again and to impose uh, new or strict lockdowns. And this is at least till the National Congress. So we can really just hope um, that, you know, new waves will be uh, smaller than this one. Uh, and also that they will vaccinate a higher pro proportion of their population. What have been the economic repercussions of the zero COVID policy? Of course, uh, economically speaking, this is a disaster. We know that strict lockdowns, um, they choke households consumption. Uh, this is really bad for the services sector, but it's also hit manufacturing. Um, we see it in the PMIs, for example, which have been below 50, which means that activity has been contracting in uh, those sectors. Manufacturing is uh, faring better than services, but still, all in all, the economy is struggling. Um, and this is on top of an economy that was already facing um, a bad real estate uh, property sector crisis. Officially speaking, they are still sticking with their 5.5% uh, target for growth this year. But we think this is way optimistic for several reasons. Uh, firstly, because we know that new waves of COVID will be met with uh, strict lockdowns in the future but also because um, support measures will remain limited. And uh, finally, they're not going to be able uh, to just rely on their export sectors to get out of this. Um, actually, demand, uh, external demand for Chinese goods has been going down as the rest of the world is normalizing again and learning to live with COVID. You said support measures will remain limited. What has been the support of the government and the People's Bank of China so far? So yes, uh, sport measures have been uh, quite limited, um, both on the monetary and the fiscal front. This, this is because they want to be uh, very prudent. Uh, they have this dilemma between a short-term boost uh, to growth and uh, long-term stability. Uh, this is because the economy is still highly leveraged, so they really want to avoid to just flood it with cheap credits. 
Um, in terms of monetary support, they did cut the reserve requirement ratio. That should help uh, boost lending. They also recently cut uh, the five-year loan prime rate, uh, which should give a little boost to housing sales. But in terms of support for the rest of the economy, we don't expect, expect much more as they remain very prudent. Um, and fiscally, they are focusing on investment in infrastructure like transportation, energy. Uh, at the latest Politburo meeting, that it asked for more support on that front. But there's only so much that can be done. So although investment will remain one of the only bright spots uh, growth-wise this year, it's not going to be enough to save the Chinese economy from all of these headwinds it's facing. So the conclusion is the situation remains fragile. Yes, uh, growth will be very disappointing this year. Um, we should not expect uh, a whole lot more in terms of support measures. New waves of COVID will be met with a zero COVID policy, strict lockdowns, um, and I do think that manufacturing will fare better than services. Céline Moulanger, thank you very much for being my guest. Thank you.